And actually, speaking on that, I know we lay, we lay Shakespeare to poetry, so let's go more into poetry then. Um, one thing I wanted to do, which I've never done on this podcast before, is that, it's, it's, and I really want to because I found someone actually who also loves poetry as much as I do, is to dissect and analyse some poems. So, we have some poems here, both of you. I've asked you to pick some of your favourite poems, and like I've said, Tolson is my, my favourite poet. Like, honestly, him sending my, his poetry to me is my favourite. So now you also get to see it. So I've asked him to um, prepare beforehand some, some poems that he, would, he can share with us. And uh, I want him to read it. And then after he reads it, um, I'm to dissect it, ask him a couple of questions about the influences, the thinking, the creative style, the inspiration. And then I'll also do the same thing. And then we can go back and forth on a couple of poems, yeah? yeah? yeah, yeah. So first, yeah, I know you have one here. Uh, just tell me the name and then if you could read that for me, please. Okay. So the first one is, Wood are like shells. Here we go. I don't look disabled, but I am. But I am given silence. I will speak for you, even if the world drowns in the noise of its lies. If I'm given shadows, I will walk with you, even if the sun burns through every corner of the sky. The woods are like shells, empty yet whole. If I'm given stillness, I will move you, even if the wind forgets how to breathe. If I'm given darkness, I will shine for you, even if the stars are swallowed in the sea of grief. I don't look shattered, but the cracks run deep. If I'm given wings, I will fly for you, even if the heavens break apart from the forces of your stars. For the woods are like shells, fragile but strong. But if I'm given hope, I will dream for you. Even if time itself forgets to go on, I don't look lost, but I wander far in the woods that hold the truth of who we are. Brava, brava! Thank you for that. First of all, thank you. That's incredible. Um, so yeah, talk to me about that poem. I know it's very hard for to ask a poet to talk about their own poetry because you just write it, you express it. But yeah, let's get deep into that. Let's talk about that. What, what inspired you to write that? What was the thinking behind that? And uh, what, what did you make it feel when you wrote it? Okay, so it's just an average day. You're sitting down. I was like, you know what? I'm going to read Bleach. Why not? I haven't read the manga in a while. I might as well reread it because the anime is coming out. Next thing you know, I read the poem and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to emulate the style that Kubo does. And the experiment worked and I just decided let's just focus on a poem about disability, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then, like I say, with the, with the, with the wind, right? Mm -hmm. The skies, the air, the lungs. We're like, you know, disabled people, trees, you know, legs, branches, you know, it's basically nature stuff, essentially. Mm -hmm. So using disability with nature and then using that and then thinking of the actual, uh, the items and mm -hmm. what is there and the ground. So that's where it came from. And so obviously you have the inspiration of Cuba's style and you're using that style and then you're obviously doing the metaphor of nature and disability. Yeah. Um, when the words come to you, is it to your actual writing process? What is it like? So obviously there's an in-between between you feeling and having that thought. But when you're writing it, is it like do you have a draft and you go back and refine it? What's that like for you? <sighs> spontaneous. Mm. My whole process is spontaneous. It can just happen. Mm. But for this podcast, I will say, when I thought of the idea, mm -hmm. I just wanted to write something. I just wanted to write a poem just to get it out, mm -hmm. what I was thinking, because I was outside. Mm. I was in the park with Louis mm. when I was with him that time. Mm. And then I was like, man, okay. I liked the environment, and it was a windy day. It was very cold. And I had this idea. I was like, what if I can do an idea with nature and disability that could work? Mm. So that's how it happened. So you don't have, like, you don't write down lines and go back to it. It's just all spontaneous and... Is it because you've written so many poems, you know what you want to say it? Because if you under if you understand in your mind, you know, okay, cool, this is how it's going to be. Because work. I've been doing it for a while, I used to write things down. But nowadays, it's a bit of both. Sometimes I write things down. Mm. Other times, it can be from interactions like with you mm -hmm. or somebody or things that I'm doing at the time. Mm. The idea will just happen and then it'll just be like, okay. Anything can explode. Anything can, anything can explode. What? And, and is it like your insistence is it like as it is is your first draft or do you have to refine it afterwards that's that's the idea 
right there. Like as you as it is, like when you when you first write it, boom, that's it. That's, that's done. it. That's it. We're done. That's, that's incredible, bro. That's incredible, bro. And like honestly, like um, yeah. like because I'll talk about my experience too. And um, actually, before we move on, I want to read one thing I've written too, yeah. so we can kind of compare about because I think it's fascinating to see other poets yeah. write in style yeah. and like how writing technique, right? So I read mine. Uh, it's untitled. I wrote a title here, but I don't think this is the right title for this. Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, it so it goes, smile on my face, tears of a sad cloud, as a realization sets in that I carry my family in my back now. Nice when I felt like I really was nobody. Feeling overwhelmed, should have told somebody. Some days feel like I need a factory reset because I'm balancing poor tendencies with an avaricious mindset. Drastically changing, so thank you for all your patience. I'm just in a different space and I choose to embrace it. I wonder, if Andrew dream of electric sheep, then do gangsters dream of an endless deep? Those who legal options just keep on dwindling. Those who can't tell the difference between strength and social condition. You see, I see the world burning and I ain't, I ain't amused. Religion's already been torn down. Spirit, spirituality is being misused. Because when the pastors pray on those who pray, that leaves the faithful confused. The whole world for the price of your soul. Tell me, which one of them would refuse? So that's, again, my, okay, I'll go from my, to answer my question. So for me, right, my style is that I write things down all the time. In my notes app, it's literally an idea will pop to me and I'll write it down. So this one started with two, so those are two different poems that I've kind of combined into one. Exactly. So the first one, Smile on My Face, Tears of a Sad Clown, that I had that in my notes for like a month. It's like I like, I like that saying because it, it to me it reflected something deep within me about the ability to kind of you know you're facing something with you you know like you're smiling your face you're outwardly just happy but tears of a sad clown because like you know like the clown is someone who performs and then you know later on it feels like um you know they 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 they're feeling that pain or that kind of struggle you know hidden you know and I kind of reflected that not on that level but I reflected that imagery in my mind you know and the kind of the explanation for that came in. I carry my family on my back now, you know, nights when I felt like it really was nobody. That's like those kind of like, you know, developing that kind of idea. And then like on the, on the second standard, one of the lines I really like is I wonder if Andrew dream of electric sheep, that the gangster dream of an endless deep, you know, to me that represents like artificial life. Like you live in an artificial life. And right? I feel like these gangsters and the people that we know around, they live in a life they don't want to live, but they have to live, you know. And I feel like that's such a tragedy. That's why I compare it to that. The Andrew Doom of Electric Sheep is like a... So that, that quote is actually from Blade Runner. It's like a book way back, and that's the title of the book. But it talks about superficiality and like, you know, like, you know, if Andrew Doom of Electric Sheep, there's a gangster dream of an endless deep. And then I take that and I kind of build on that, you know. Those with legal options just keep on dwindling, da, 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 and I talk about religion and spirituality. For so for me, like um, a lot of my poems, you know, I have some other ones, some more personal ones about love, but a lot of the more kind of like societal ones, you know, they're me making a comment on society, but that's based on an idea that I had or something like that. Do you relate to that, or is it something different for you? My poetry process is a lot different from yours. Speak to me about that too. Because I don't really follow a specific topic mm -hmm. it's just whatever i want to do at that time because it's like i said with the wood with shells one it was more about what i saw outside mm. and then just writing that because a lot of my poems don't relate to disability sometimes it talks about love mm -hmm. sometimes things that i'm thinking about or just an idea i've always wanted to put out for a long time all right and then it just come out and what you see and what i've sent you that is it like no changes nothing else like this like there's a few changes like redrafting in there but it's not that much like that's the idea that's the raw that's thing that's the raw thing yeah that's the whole poem in its entirety mm. and i want these poems to make people think to make you think and to make others think what does that mean words are like shells what does that even mean there's a double meaning to that go on what's double meaning from your perspective i know as a again i'm going behind the scenes here poets usually don't like because i know exactly what you mean you want people to infer their own meaning yeah but on this podcast i want to ask you, you what your meaning is so if you can understand if that came across so what was your meaning when you said poetry? my meaning was for me personally as a disabled person mm. words are like shells it's all like a disabled person's journey they're hurdles what they have to go through 
discrimination mm. and what, how do they represent themselves in this world? Because mm. I went through similar things, not, not to the extent that a lot of people went, mm. but I had those moments where I was feeling sad mm. or when I was feeling annoyed with something. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things I was going through. Mm. So I decided, let me convey those emotions and try and communicate it the best I can. Mm. So that was that. That's beautiful, brother. That's so beautiful. And I think it's so important um, for that message. And that's why it's so important for poets to exist. And that's why I always say my favorite quote, my favorite saying is poets was, poetry will save the world. Because I think it's so true. The ability for people to communicate what they're yeah. feeling and their experience, their lived experience, is what we need in this world of like, kind of like, like um, where we're kind of being separated by all other forces. If we can get past that and just hear people and people will read that poem and if they can understand that, they can understand your perspective a little bit more. Yeah. Um, would you mind sharing another one, please? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Because I think, yeah, I think that's so important why you bring that up. I think it's so important for poets to really like live in their truth because there's a lot of fakery out there about people perceiving to be someone else, but that's because they think they can't be themselves. I, I'm, and I think poets are here to say, no, you can absolutely be yourself. And you are actually needed. Your perspective is actually needed. Yeah. So go on. What's the next one, please? All right. Next one. Emotions first. This is a haiku that I did back in 2017. Right? I rewrote it recently. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoy. Emotions play with me like strings, tugging at the corners of my mind. Trees fall, bending to their fate. A loud crack. Birds scatter across the sky, flying to nowhere. Emotions, they come first, before the birth of reason, before logic tears itself apart. Stop thinking, just feel. Let the flood of the thought break free. Minutes waste, times, ch times chases. My skull holds my thoughts prisoner, but even my mind shatters. A broken tool, a piece of a puzzle that never fits. I act before I understand bleeding from the wrist, like burning tar spilling over. Cars race by, my heart beats in seconds, not hours. Is it gone, broken, or not? Emotions control me, a clock striking midnight, each tick a reminder of the life I can't grasp. Visions dim, my logic dies, I fall, struggling to check. If I feel, if I still feel, if I still think, my name is outside uh, the, the embodiment, but all I know is pain. The emotion's my only truth, wisdom slipping through my fingers. Farewell to the life I can't reclaim, as the waterfall rushes on, taking my thoughts with it. Hold on to that. Okay, so questions. Okay. Again, same thing as before. What was the inspiration for that? Was it a love interest? Was it just you're thinking about love? Is it even love? What do you represent for you what does that poem represent for you this poem it means a few things we always talk about mental health mm -hmm. the pandemic and everything that's happening so i kind of wanted to write a poem about mental health because everyone's talking about it mm -hmm. and i wanted to convey what's it like being in that mental health situation mm -hmm. a nervous breakdown or when you're feeling sad how do you feel what is the mind racing how does the thoughts go so I wanted to convey those emotions and that process. Did it help you overcome? Did you did you think did it help you think through that idea about mental health and overcoming emotions once you wrote it? I mean, I went through a lot of things when I was annoyed or when I was unsure about something, and I just decided, you know what, I might as well. I always write mental health poems all the time, but in different ways, obviously. So with this one, I wanted to focus on an old haiku talking about mental health, mm. but from a modern lens per se. Mm. So I wanted to convey, how does a young person feel mm. in a world that is so massive, so wide, and there's so many things you have to juggle in adult life? Obviously, that's a subjective opinion, mm. but I think that's true. that is one of the things I wanted to explore. What, so you can hold it to you, can Yeah, sure. What, any, any answers have you gotten from that? Because that's a beautiful, straight, the, that's so true. You do feel isolated in this vast world. Um, for you writing a poetry, for you living your own life, how do you help, what advice would you give people to how to get through that? To be honest, don't give up. I always say it's hard. You'll go through hard things. I go through hard things. You mm -hmm. go through hard things. Kieran goes through hard things. Mm -hmm. 
Just don't give up. Keep going. Keep praying to God. You know, God's always there. I know some people may not be religious, but mm-hmm. for me personally, God's always there. Mm-hmm. He's always holding, you know, on my shoulder, mm-hmm. watching me, mm-hmm. things like that. That's what keeps me going. That's beautiful, brother. That's yeah. beautiful. And um, it's so fascinating too, because when you, when I read that, when you showed it to me, I thought it was about love. I thought it was like, oh, because again, I think that's so beautiful about poetry, how you can write it, but the person that receives it will receive it differently yeah. because of their own lived experience. Yeah. So whatever whatever you write, whatever you share with them, they're going to be like, actually, this is how I receive it. And so it's very rare that you see a poet come and be like, actually, this is what I mean, because now it puts a, a kind of a definitive meaning on the poem, which yeah. is why I think we poets don't like to do that, because it's like, no, have your own meaning, and that's yeah. more important to me. Yeah. You think for yourself. But it's so fascinating, because I was reading, I was thinking about someone going through emotional turmoil about love and trying to find their way through that and like how the emotions rush it in. But I think that's more about, about my lived experience right now than it is yeah. about the yeah. poems itself. So yeah. I think that's so interesting how things do that. Do you care about people's perception of your poems outside of your own true perception? It depends. Mm. It really depends. Like, I remember when I first started it, mm. I used to think about it a lot because I used to perform my poetry when I was in college and stuff mm. and in university in Kingston mm-hmm. and in Rahampton a little bit. But after a while, as I got older and as I developed my style, I said, you know what? I need to love the stuff I want to create. Mm. Yeah, there's feedback. Yeah, there's criticism. And this is what I was saying to Kieran and this is what I was saying to you. Mm. And we keep talking about this. I don't mind criticism if it's like fair Mm -hmm. and you can, you know, you can say like, I don't like this aspect, fine. Mm -hmm. But if it's like, you just don't, you know, you don't engage with it, then that's where it becomes, okay, fine, subjective opinion, but you don't need to tear someone down over it. Exactly. Um, but with my poetry now, I know I'm going to send it to a few people. I know mm. people are going to have lines on it, but mm-hmm. for me, it's more about the process and enjoying it at the moment. Mm, it's the process of writing it and sharing it. Yeah. Did you find it difficult um, to share it? Because that's what I, I always struggle with at the beginning, which is when I, once I wrote it, Sharing it with someone else was like kind of giving them the power. The oh, beginning. definitely. Especially earlier on when I was getting into it mm. with a crowd of people. I remember when I was in Kingston College, mm. sharing my poetry to 15, 12 people. Mm. And people are trying to perceive it. Very difficult. But it definitely built my confidence. Because as, as I kept on doing it more, more and more and more, the teachers started to notice Mm. and then luckily as I kept doing it I remember my teacher Carlos shout out Carlos shout out Carlos as well um he basically came up to me and said your poetry is really good we want to do it for a performance Mm. and then we've got oh what a lovely war which was basically a drama play that we did Mm -hmm. and one of my poems war scars and the meaning of war poems that I wrote specifically for one of the show Mm -hmm. it actually was shown to a lot of people Mm -hmm. and I remember just performing it live on stage Mm -hmm. my parent my mum and my grandma were there Mm -hmm. they were supporting it and I just remember the reactions of the people and they were saying like wow this poem is so good like it makes you think about things this is a world war one poem obviously Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very topical thing, history. Mm -hmm. But what I understood is that a lot of people were like, poetry's not about Shakespeare. It can be a whole different thing. All my friends, they were into Shakespeare, but not deep Mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. But when they heard it from me, when I voiced it, everybody was like, yeah, that's (coughs) powerful. And everyone, I remember the audience, one of the members, they were thanking me. They were saying, oh, your poem's really good. You should definitely get this published and stuff like that. And I just remember feeling like, well, at least my poem literally got somewhere. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking too deeply about it. Mm. As long as I did it, I did it. And it made me more confident. It made me want to experiment more and do things I wanted to do. Mm. Okay. That's brilliant. What, really well put. And actually, okay, to close, before, I want you to ruin one more, but I'll also sacrifice a bit of myself to the, yeah. <laughs> to the poetry um, corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one is called more Musings About a Muse. It goes like this. Ever been loved by a poet? 
general connection is rare, so they often overdo it. Ever known a romance of his very own becoming, you'll find hidden notes filled with such passionate longing. Ever feel your soul be so beautifully observed, comparisons to Helen of Troy, because the least you deserve. I tell a girl like, baby, recite my poems back to me, while we sit beneath these stars and gaze into eternity. Because beyond this tension, I feel there's love between you and me, but it's, hid but it's hidden behind these words, so it's something only I can see. A little birdie told me how to find love. He said, look up next time you're out in the meadow. Love will be the invisible bird that casts a quick shadow. Is the, que is the key that turns in the lock of your heart. Your once and lost will be cast apart. That's why you'll find what you had long forgotten. So why do you stay in a prison with the door so wide open? Because you think you must? Because you think of trust? It'll all be ashes to ashes and dust to dust. First of all, I'm going to ask you, spin it back on you, what do you think that poem means and what did you get from it? Okay. The way, when I heard it before the recording, actually, mm -hmm. the first thing I thought about was independence, mm -hmm. family, trying to build that connection. You're trying to live up to that expectation, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You're trying to live your adult life the way you want, but also trying to make sure that your family's safe and they're happy and making sure that you're living your dreams and you're living, you know, making sure your family's happy. Mm -hmm. It's more like you're the guardian, right? You're trying to make sure you're watching over your family and you can provide and you can give. So say if you, you know, you get into marriage, you want to marry someone one day, you want to have that same love, that same environment for that family so that, that family can have bigger connections, bigger opportunities, so your future family can have those things that you didn't have to go through. That's, that's what I think. That's so interesting. Bro, that's so interesting. And I feel bad even saying what the actual meaning was because I thought that's such a beautiful way of interpreting it. So when I wrote this initially, I wrote it, like I said, it's amusing about a muse, about when I was going through like a time before of like turmoil when I was like thinking a lot about love and all these things and romantic love and you know how poets get, when you start feeling stuff, romantic. You, you romantic, you start to want to express it. And so that was for me, the goal was like, okay, how do I express this feeling that I'm having internally and actually not like kind of just fester and just sit on it. And I think that's something I've learned as I've gone older, that like one of my ways of being now is that instead of just sitting on feelings and not, if, instead of not processing feelings, I choose to express them through poetry. And because I have to think about them and write them down and reflect on them and talk to my friends about them, um, it allows me to really kind of like look at it for what it is and like understand the feeling, understand what it is. I'm like, oh, cool, I understand now. Like, this is what I was going through. Oh, damn, okay, this is what I feel. And then when I perform it, because I've started doing recently, I kind of let it go and it kind of just like goes and it just gives it to the people. So that, to me, that's so beautiful. And um, finally, would you mind reading one more of your poems yeah, for me? Yeah, yeah. And I love this, because honestly, like, to be able to sit there and talk about, read poems back and forth to each other, is something that I've not done before, but um, right. it's so beautiful, and I, I, I love this next one that's coming up. All right. So this is my final one. Go on. It is called, And So He Smiles. There is no fate for those who smile against the odds. No chains to bind the boy who refuses to bow. TJ the Smiler. Born with cheeks round as the moon, a baby at one, joy bubbling like the rivers of light. Can you hear his laughter? It was a language older than sorrow. A song sung in every corner of his soul. At age six, he stood before the world, feet firm on dreams, eyes full with fire. I will walk some day, he said. But his feet never touched the earth like the rest. Instead, they soared. The stars listened where no one else could, and he touched the skies. They fought unreachable. Thirteen bought a swagger, a charm that danced in the sunlight. The ladies turned their heads, but he never took his eyes off the road ahead. His smile was an anthem, one that echoed through the spaces, almost forgot to fill. And now, Jazz Blue, the poet, the teacher, the man with the words like a storm, Crafted from love for the heritage he carries, for the black British roots that run deep, and for those who, like him, found strength in what others called weakness. Disability was never his anchor, it was his sail. They see a boy who never walked, but TJ was never meant to walk, he was meant to fly, to spread his joy like a shooting star and a light burning through the night. For what matters is not the ground beneath your feet. But the sky you touch with every smile, with every word that lifts another. 
God gave him the purpose, not in the steps he could take, but in the joy he shared, and the stars he ignited along the way. Brother, no, honestly, that's incredible. Again, finally, two questions actually, it's twofold. First, tell me why um, you wrote that, and obviously there's reasons, and I think it's like you were saying, the topics and the themes, and like what you think people should take away, people, what you want people to take away from it, but also talk to me a little bit about why you think people should write poetry. Why you think writing poetry is so important, and why it's become so important to you, back up the back of that poem. The reason why I wrote this was, again, I wanted to continue the theming mm. of what I wanted to do. Mm. I think poetry is important because it's helped me. It's helped me a lot, especially with life and how I go about things. Now, if it weren't for Shakespeare, I mean, there's other things I was inspired by, like anime and things, but mm -hmm. this one was what got me into writing. It's improved a lot of things. Like, even basic things like writing personal statements, mm. CVs, like job applications that you need to do on mm. a day-to-day -day basis mm. to get through. Shakespeare's really, or poetry rather, mm -hmm. really helped me with those things and made me understand these hard things that I struggled with. Obviously, you have, you know, your family helping you. But these things really helped me to do things on my own and to actually apply life. And especially with my acting stuff too. Mm really helps you communicate, really conduct yourself professionally, and it always goes back to that. And the poem for me personally, I just wanted to write about my disability, where I was from, the ideas I was thinking about when I was young. What is your favourite stanza in that poem? Like, what speaks, what comes out to you, what really speaks to you? Ah. Uh, I know it's hard, I know. And I, it's, but, by the way, he doesn't know I'm asking these questions. I'm just asking these questions off the, off the dome, so he's up to My favourite one was... TJ the Smiler, born with cheeks round as the moon, a baby at age one, bubbles like the river of light. So wow, wow. the Smiler, that one came from my parents and my grandmother because I used to smile a lot when I was a baby. Mm -hmm. So because I remember I have this, I don't know if you saw my WhatsApp photo, mm -hmm. but it was actually me when I was really young and I had a smile on my face and my mum just took a picture mm -hmm. of just me smiling. So mm -hmm. that represents the smile apart mm -hmm. and the nickname persists even now mm -hmm. when i'm happy and i'm full with joy mm -hmm. round cheeks that's when i was when i was really really young mm -hmm. so that's what it represents it also represents the picture that my mom sent me and the other, the other uh, line the stanza so the other one i will walk someday so disability mm. walking on crutches mm. you're working hard and mm. you know it reminded me of the time because I wasn't really exposed to the disability community mm. until much later mm -hmm. in life. So like with WizKids, Greenhouse, all these organisations, I didn't even know much about mm. through a friend that my mum and I used to see. And mm. They used to recommend it to us. So I always used to grow up with, you know, with the, with the mindset of a normal family you're going through life as normal obviously there's hurdles but <coughs> that's what i grew up with i didn't know about much about disability communities or poets and things until much later in life mm. where i started researching it myself and i started to have an understanding of yeah a lot of disabled people go through a lot obviously i went through that but not as bad as other people like activists and everybody went mm. so that's what it means with the poem really where what? I was from, really. That's beautiful, and thank you so much for sharing that. That's You're really, welcome. really powerful. I think, um, finally, on that topic, what do you what do you think everyone has the potential to write a poem? Do you think they should? And um, what does the phrase "poetry save the world" mean to you? Poetry can save the world. Let's answer that question. Go on. It can. The reason why I say that is because it's changed my life. If I wasn't exposed to Shakespeare, I wouldn't have become the person that I am. Mm. Like, straight up truth. Not, not from a life perspective, but engaged with writing. Also from a personal level, the friends that I've made in the last years, like a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now, mm. I made a lot of friends. Mm. I made friends with Louis in my undergrad, mm -hmm. with his brother as well, with the same interests. I wouldn't have met you guys. Mm -hmm. 
Kieran and you, man. Mm -hmm. You guys, man. All this stuff connected this together because all this writing, all these conversations about One Piece and all this, it wouldn't have happened if I didn't take that plunge mm -hmm. of poetry at all. And I'm so grateful for this career because I wouldn't have been able to do most of these things. And this was... I wasn't even expecting this to go this far. Mm. Like, that's how deep it is. Like, I always say to my friends, like, oh. and when you ask me these questions, I'm like, yeah, it was just a one-off thing. And I generally mean that. Mm. I wasn't expecting to go this far because I was going to take a different mm. career, like in IT, mm. with computers, and mm. that kind of thing. And then this thing kind of spun off on its own thing. On its own yeah, thing it and, and, its, own and thing. its community, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And like to answer my own question, why I think poetry say the word. Like I love that phrase. I kind of like been using that for a couple of months now, and um, 100% agree with you. And I relate so much to what you said. Um, obviously, yes, the opportunities that it allows you to do. Like I didn't think poetry would go that far either. I just wrote it once to just impress a girl, and then I just kept writing it because it, it helped me get through times, difficult times in life, it helped me understand more about myself. And I think that. To me, that was so important to me because maybe because of the environment that I grew up in, understanding myself became paramount. It became like, if I understand myself, it helped me to understand the world around me. And like, I'm still on that journey. And like you've said, like this podcast is the same thing. I'm trying to understand life. I'm trying to understand people and their purpose and like trying to develop that. And that all started, started from poetry. That was the first seed of it. First seed of understanding that. First seed of expressing that. And like, you know, like you said, you can meet new people. I met Karen. I met you. I met so many other people just from the poetry alone, you know. And uh, you come into their world, they can show you about their poems. And, you know, I feel like that's a window to, into your soul. You know, it's like, don't ask me about myself. Don't ask me about my life. Just read my poetry. If you read my poetry, you have way more of an introduction to who I am, to what I present, than, than I could even tell you. It's the exploration of life. Go that's on. what poetry is. Because like you've got to think about it like this. Poetry is basically life itself. Mm. It's an extension of you. Mm. One part of you that's hidden away, mm. right? Like, if it weren't for that, where would we, we humans, how would we express? Mm. It even goes back to, like, religion and things like that. With Adam and Eve and the whole thing with, like, the rib cage, mm. the tree of knowledge, you know, and the apple mm. and all that stuff. Poetry goes back even way far. Mm. Like, if we're taking from religion like Adam and Eve and mm. things like that. That's where life started, man. Mm. That's where Shakespeare got his ideas. Mm. Like, if we're going on a physical, you know, like a physical, philosophical level, it all comes, everything in life, mm. in general, mm. comes from poetry to some capacity. Whether it's, you know, you're walking outside or you're taking a breath or you're brushing your teeth, you're getting ready for something. Poetry is like a storybook, man. The pages will keep on going until you cease to exist. It's your own story. You're your own storybook. No matter how many pages there are, it could be 100. If you live 100, there'll be 100 pages. If, there, if you're living 120, it's 120 pages. If you're 80, then it's 80 pages of that storybook. Mm. It shows you the legacy of your story and where you've come and how you've developed as a person. So life to me, or poetry, is like a storybook. To me, anyway. Beautiful. Bro, there's nothing more I can add to that. That was a beautiful way to end that section about poetry. You know, like, you're 100% right. I'm never going to try to add to that. Um, one of the other things that we've also really um, both have much in common yeah. is anime and manga. Okay. So moving from poetry now to anime and manga, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your introduction, first off, to anime. What was your introduction to anime? What was the thing that got you into anime in the beginning? 